Okay, Broden Quattro is here. So, yeah, I'm gonna take a look at the Titan car today and I wanna see what's what. I'm just gonna play with the paint and just see how much can come back. So here's what I'm looking at. I don't know how well that comes through on the camera. Hopefully it comes through okay. You can kind of see it's it's really rough. I'm curious if this is gonna clean up. So I'm gonna just hit it with the polisher and just see what happens. Okay, that's just a couple minutes of work. You can still see the stuff here. And then of course, it's disappeared. There is a deeper scratch there that's still there, but it's actually really gone. Obviously, I didn't touch the end here. That's kind of how the whole panel was. Everything's gone up until right about here. You can see it all, see that? But it came out all over where I actually polished it pretty well actually I'm happy okay I was kind of playing with it but uh, playing with the paint at least I haven't done this side yet it's still got a lot to do but there's one thing that's been driving me crazy besides the 90s alarm and that is the ignition switch. So the ignition, the car actually starts up just fine, but I'll kind of try to show you here. So on the ignition switch, when you actually turn the key, it doesn't, oh, see. It doesn't automatically click back like it should. It should be clicking back over uh, to stop running or trying to have the starter run. It doesn't do it automatically. So nine times out of 10, it's this ignition switch that's behind here. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna pop off this column cover and yeah, remove the cluster and get to the switch here and try to make that happen. hard to see but if you can see this see that red right there that red is actually factory paint meaning this is probably the original uh, the original ignition switch should be one on that side too you can see the little red spot right there uh, yeah that's uh, probably the original uh, ignition switch it needs to be replaced so we'll pull that out now we're gonna pop off the the pack and then we're gonna gouge out the paint here on both sides and pull it so under that paint is this little bolt we take it out and we're gonna take out the other side It'll be good okay I got them both out so now we're just gonna reach back here and uh, pull out the actual switch hopefully it comes out nicely Maybe. All right, there we go. boom so yeah made in West Germany and you can see that there's definitely something wrong with that. You might be able to tell that that spring, it's supposed to be spring loaded and it's supposed to spring back into place. Definitely isn't doing that. So, yep. Appears to be an original West Germany, probably made in 1990. So, it's uh, had a good run, but we're going to take it out, yeah. The 47th week of 1990 is when it was made. So yeah, uh, definitely gonna replace that, put a nice new one in there and we shouldn't have that problem. Just gonna take a quick second to compare old and new. So this is an OEM one as well, but this is like the B revision. This is just the original one here. You can see that they've made some changes to the actual design, they've put in some reinforcing stuff here to make it a little bit stronger. So generally these ones hold up a lot better than the original one. So we'll swap that out 
and get moving. All right, you can see there's no longer paint there. It's been replaced. We're gonna check it and test it before we put everything back together. Notice how that clicked back as soon as I started it up. Let me show you that again. You can see how it clicks back. That's what it should be doing. It wasn't doing before. Basically it went over a curb into a fence. Suspension got jacked up, I think. Uh, previous owner said he replaced a control arm. Not sure if there's any other jacked up parts. So uh, I have a little bit of footage of me pulling apart the suspension, looking at it. I think tonight I'm gonna pull out the tie rods and maybe throw in some more suspension bits and see what we can't do. Um, Brian Scott hit me up and he was asking me about the suspension, how to take out the tie rods. So I kind of went through that and explained it to him, took some pictures for him and figured, well, I might as well make a video out of it. So here we go. Okay, um, first thing I'm doing, I'm actually gonna detach the tie rods from the steering rack. To do that, battery's removed, battery access panel is removed, and then right down there, you can actually get to the steering rack. Uh, hold on a second, because you can't see anything. So let's pull out the trusty cell phone. Why not? Okay. With cell phone, you can actually see it. So you got that rack right there. Terrible video, I'm sorry. I should be ashamed of myself. You can see the bolt there. Um, underneath that bolt, there's actually a nut on the other side, and then it's actually threaded through the rack. So you need to remove those two bolts, and then plus there's actually a steering dampener that also needs to be removed. And then you can actually take off that hole assembly with both tie rods tied to it and um, yeah that's how we're gonna do this so that's the first step okay so got the two nuts off they're a pain uh, and they were different sized for some odd reason uh, let's see from here you can kind of see that's where the two nuts are or were to the back side of it. So now they're off. Now I can actually take those through bolts out of the rack. And uh, that's all done from the top side. And then I gotta remove the other, uh, what is it called? The dampener. And we should be good. I turned it all the way back to the right. And now it's right here below the coil. So should be able to get that with an easy extension. This isn't the first time all this stuff has been out because there was 16 millimeters, 17 millimeters, and then the dampener is a 15, but everything else is alternating, which is unusual. But at least it's all coming out. That's the important part. This will be out in a minute. Top bracket's out. Now this, see that? There's the rack, there's the bolts. Now this whole bracketry is free from that rack. So both tie rods are now free from there. I need to just remove them from the ends. So the tie rod ends need to come off. So right here, this guy, he'll come off. And then I can just take it through one of the sides. I'll have to take it off on the other side too, but then it'll slide out over everything. Okay. Tie rod bracketry has been disconnected from the steering rack and tie rod ends have been removed from their homes on both sides. So now I should be able to pull this whole bracket straight on through. So now I have my entire tie rod assembly with both arms, both end links, and it's a lot easier to replace swap these out like this. This bracket actually comes outward, so you really have to remove this entire bracket to replace any of them. Um, inner tie rods actually feel good. I just don't know about the status for these. I have spares, so I'm gonna replace them. 
Okay. Old and new. We're gonna leave them, try to leave them about the same length. Same again, old and new. Actually pretty dang close as is, but they definitely look a lot nicer, a lot less rusty. This one of the boots was torn and ripped up a while back. Be nice and clean now. New arms assembled, attached, ready to be put back in. Uh, so, let's see, the steering arms have been swapped out. So full new tie rods, um, tie rod ends, the whole nine yards, inner, outer, all done. Um, I still haven't taken this to the alignment shop, but um, obviously after doing this work, I'm definitely gonna wanna take it to the alignment shop and have that done. Uh, I'm kind of at the point where I just kind of want to start doing stuff and moving forward with it instead of Checking things out worst case scenario. I have to take parts back off, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw on some Kato view uprights and we're gonna throw on some 5x112 Hubs that I already have pressed uh, now. I took I took the hubs from a 1982 through 1995 C4 S car um, Basically, either front or rear hubs, they're the same part, but you can take them, you can machine a small amount off the back end and press it into the stock Coupe Quattro assembly here, the, the stock knuckle, and run the um, same bearings, same everything. Everything will work. You have to normally either re-drill your stock rotors to a five by one twelve pattern, but since they're a floating rotor, it really doesn't cause issues. Or it's also a good excuse, and one of the main reasons why you'd want to go with a big brake kit is for, um, you know, once you have that five lug on there, it's really easy to do. So we're gonna take out the strut assembly, we're gonna take off the knuckle, we're gonna take out the axle bolt, take off the brakes, and put on some new fresh parts. We're only gonna do this corner tonight, um, just because I don't even know if I'll have enough time for that. So. Let's get cracking. Be just to help out and be a little bit more descriptive. Took out the axle bolt. Took off the ABS sensor the cap here. And these just wiggle out. Uh, if your car's super rusty, they won't wiggle out. But we don't have a super rusty car. So there's my ABS sensor. This bracket holds the brake line. Runs over here. We'll have to take that off of the strut. Um, there is a. Should be a 17 millimeter pinch bolt that holds that ball joint at the bottom here. We'll have to take that off. There is a, um, a sway bar link here. We'll have to take off the sway bar link. And we got a top mount bolt here. You can't see it. It's like a 22. We'll have to take that off. So that's what we're gonna do. So now you know what we're doing. And hopefully the oops the time lapse is pointed at the ground. So. Let's try again. Point, point time lapse, right place. Hopefully it's picking up video. So now I'll start buzzing all that stuff off. These are just 10 millimeters that hold that on. This, I believe, is probably 17 millimeter. We already have the tie rod off because we just replaced them. And like I said, that should be 17 down there. These are actually larger. I think these are a 21 or a 22. Um, I can actually take them off together because I'm not using either of those parts, but I do need to either disconnect the brake line there or, or something. So we'll see, we're gonna proceed. That step's done. They're looking pretty empty under here. Um, got stuff out. And now we're gonna put stuff in. See how it all works out. Back from the garage with some goodies. Boom, KW V1s. Already converted, pushed in hubs. So basically, you can't see it great. You can see it was machined there to fit. This will put it right where we want it. Um, we got Apical stainless lines for the brakes. We got Brighton Engineering brake bracket uh, holders. So we're gonna keep moving forward.
instruction here. So uh, I have a strut mount put on here. There's a castle nut that has to go in here. And I have a castle nut tool. So we put that on, put on the strut mount so that it can actually be where it's supposed to be. So there it is. Castle nut's installed, strut mount is installed. Now we can actually put this up in there. Uh, KW has changed their setup. So now, if you can see these, they have little threaded inserts. So on B3 coupes, they use a M12 bolt. On B4s and B4 coupes, they use an M14 bolt. And so they actually have these little washers that are removable to uh, work with either setup. Um, KW does a great job because they also use their factory brake mount, or I'm sorry, the brake bracket mount. Um, and then of course it's all stainless. Everything's tapered. It's, it's a perfect fitment. It's absolutely fabulous. Um, this is probably my, I don't know, fifth or sixth set of KWs I've used. Absolutely love them. Can't do anything else. So we'll toss this up in there and keep moving. Past, it's like past midnight, but we're still cracking away. We got Porsche Big Reds, uh, A8 calipers. We're gonna toss this stuff on there, even though there's still gonna be more work to do here. But we just want it kind of together and it's kind of assembled. It's all gotta come back off. But yeah, we're gonna try. Okay, it's like 12.30, I think. It's kind of all thrown together. Um, nothing's bled, nothing's final tight, final torqued, but it's all kind of there. And I just kind of wanted to see it all together. Now the process for the other corners is kind of the same thing. The rears are a little bit different, but they're actually a little bit easier since they don't have um, as many connections and it's tricky things. So uh, I might record a rear the next time I do the rear, but I probably won't record the other side for the front, but that's basically how it's done. Uh, make sure you tighten your top bolt, make sure you tighten um, your tie rod end, your sway bar link, and especially the ball joint down behind here. Um, brakes, obviously, lots of other stuff, but it looks good. It's kind of assembled, moving forward. Just to wrap this up, here we go. Volk LE37T, um, everything back on the ground. Still needs some stuff finally torqued. But looking good, looking very good. Ran out of time last night, but that's what happens. <laughs>